this is Carolina Millan, and welcome to a new episode of Beyond the Hustle. And I'm here today with a returning guest, and I'm super excited that he's here. We made it happen. Um, I know he he doesn't have the best lighting. He will tell you why. But it's uh, writer, entrepreneur, investor, podcaster, Mr. James Altucher. How are you, James? Great. And Carolina, thanks for having me on the podcast again. Such a a uh, welcome treat to go back after uh, uh, three years. Um, so now let's talk a little bit uh, about your your latest book. You said you wrote another book somehow. I'm, I'm not a, I'm not aware of the other one you wrote before this one, but I'll ask you about that later. Um, right. So skipping the line. So first of all, what what does it mean? How can people skip the line? What is the concept behind it? And what is you know one of the biggest takeaways you want people to take from from the book? Sure. I think the biggest takeaway is that it's not too late for you to change your passions, your interests, your careers, your way of building wealth. It's never too late, no matter what. And uh, a lot of people will say, like, like Carolina, let's say you decided at a certain age, oh, I'm going to leave my job or stop being a podcaster and I'm going to become a lawyer or a fiction writer, or, you know, an actress, or whatever it is you want to be, a, a sports commentator on TV. Uh-huh. And, you know, because I could tell you're very much interested in commentating on baseball, on, <laughs> on or television. And, and people will tell you, Carolina, you can't do that. You're XYZ age, you have responsibilities, you have a mortgage to pay, you have kids, whatever it is, you know, you have things to do, you can't do that. It's not too late. You you have all the people who say you can't do that, they can't do it. But and they're afraid of you doing it because it means that you're doing something that they can't do. And that and that all the all the wishes and dreams that they ever had and that they denied themselves, you're they're you're they're watching you do it and it's too maybe it is too late for them. If you know, I think Henry Ford said. Um, whether you say you can or you say you can't, you're right. Yeah. And, and um, you know, skipping the line is about in this time where everybody, you know, the entire economy turned upside down. We want to do what we want to. We want to do the things we love. We don't want to just go back to the cubicle. We want to do. We life is short. We want to do the things we love and we want to make money from it. So my point is, you can skip the line. You don't need ten thousand hours to learn a skill and it's possible to make money doing almost anything you could possibly dream of. There are avenues to make money. So this is not just a book about learning, which there are plenty of books about learning. And this is not just a book about monetizing interest. There are plenty of books about that, but it's about learning very quickly to the point where you could then use techniques that I described to monetize. And I think people have trouble with both things. People don't really know how to monetize their interests and people don't really know how to skip the line in terms of learning. You know, Malcolm Gladwell popularized the idea of the 10,000 hour rule, which says you need 10,000 hours to get good at something. Yeah. This is, this is complete BS. And I, I focus more on what I call the 10,000 experiment rule, but it's really more like the 100 experiment rule. Do 100 experiments in an area you're interested in. We could talk about what an experiment is. Yes. And, and you will be, maybe you won't be the best in the world, but you don't have to be the best in the world to make money at something. You could be in the top 5% in the world or the top 2% in the world. That's much easier to do. I, th- I think sometimes we exaggerate the downside a lot and then we get fearful and then we just don't experiment anything. So what do you, what do you have for advice like to beat the fear of trying something new? Well, if you love something and if you love the process, and if, and if you love, you know, and if you do it with these experiments where you know you're gonna learn something on each experiment with very little cost, you don't get afraid. Like I would be, of course, yes, I would be afraid every single time I went on stage. That's what I'm talking about, <laughs> that's scary. Every single time I'm on stage, I'm afraid. Sometimes more than others, sometimes just as bad as the very first time. And there's nothing you can do about that. Mm. But that's like a natural biological thing. People don't like to speak in front of other people because they could lose status in the tribe. And so this goes back a million years. You can't fight biology. But it's just, if you love the process and if you love experimenting, yes, yes, you're going to be disappointed. Like when you do something you love, that doesn't mean you're always going to be happy. 
Like, let's say you love playing poker. You love it. And many people love playing poker. It's millions of people play poker. But does that mean you're going to be happy all the time when you're playing poker? No, because a good chunk of the time, you're going to lose money. No matter how good you are, even if you're the best in the world, the best in the world loses money about 50% of the time. Poker has some randomness to it. And the key to playing good at poker is that when you win, you win more than you than you lose when you lose. Ideally, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you're very good, you'll succeed in doing that. But even when you're very good, you're still going to have some bad losing sessions. And then you're going to be very unhappy with those. If you just want to be happy, then eat popcorn all day and watch TV shows. Like, <laughs> I love TV. I would be happy just watching TV shows and eating popcorn all day. But doing, some, doing something and getting good at something and, and enjoying the process of mastery, because that's what this is about. It's about mastering something you love doing that brings i don't want to call it happiness but that gives you a sense of well-being there are so many benefits to that you benefit internally because feelings of mastery is is makes you feel like you have higher status it makes mm. you feel it releases dopamine and so on yeah also, no totally and well you talk you talk a lot about you know coming up with new ideas and also in 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 choose yourself guide to wealth book which is my my favorite book of yours that i've read i haven't read all of them yet but i will well, um, most of them are bad i would say choose yourself and choose yourself guide to wealth are good and reinvent yourself that's like a trilogy i really like skip the line uh and then i don't know Those are the four books I would recommend. Oh, the Choose Yourself Stories is, is more of a fun book, but I like that book. Yeah. So, and I think in, in in Skip the Line, you also talk about the the 1% rule, right? The improving yourself 1%. And through these experiments, you think that's something that will happen, right? Eventually, where yeah, if you do this every, constantly. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, go ahead. No, if, you, if you're constantly doing things instead of just daydreaming about, oh, I would love to do this, but I can't. Okay, let's do an experiment like you just described. Um, would that also contribute to growing 1% every day? And what else can people do to, to keep keep that up? Absolutely. So, so the idea of 1% a day is, and this is it starts off as a math equation, but 1% a day doesn't mean that in a year you're 365% better. So 365% better means you're roughly three or four times better than you were when you started. Hmm. And first off, what does that really mean? Like, how do I know I'm a th three times better writer? It's a very subjective or qualitative thing. But yeah, let's just let's just say you could quantitatively measure that. Um, and in some areas of life you can, in some areas of life you can't. And uh, uh, but but that's not what one percent a day means. One percent a day compounded, meaning yesterday I improved one percent, so now I'm building one percent on that improvement, and then tomorrow on that improvement and so on. It doesn't add up to 365, right. it actually adds up to about 37, 3,700% because it compounds, it's like interest compounding every day, 1%. So you're actually 37 times better, not three times better at the end of a year. So this concept of trying to improve daily, even though there's no, in many cases, you can't quantitatively measure it, just having that idea in mind, you will improve a lot. And since of course I wrote the book, I get a lot of testimonials. This has happened mm -hmm. to many people. But yes, doing an experiment is one way to improve 1% every day. When I did stand-up comedy on the subway, I don't know if I did a good job, but I learned I got a little bit better, maybe 1% better at dealing with a hostile audience. Because yeah. the New York City subway definitely has a hostile audience at rush hour. I got a little bit 1% better at dealing with my fears. I got 1% better at what's called one-liners, which is telling a joke very and getting to the laugh point very quickly because you don't have time to tell a story because people are coming and going off the subway. Um, so I did get 1% better from that experiment, maybe even a couple of percent better. And in, you know, uh, if you're a writer, let's say you know, you're used to writing college essays. That was the last time you wrote. Okay, well now write an article or a little story about what happened, something interesting that happened to you yesterday. And you write in the first person, here's the experiment, write in the first person, you know, you means to use the pronoun I, this happened mm -hmm. to me, I did this. And write about something, the worst thing that happened to you yesterday. So um, it might even be something boring, but you have to make it interesting. 
And that's an experiment and you get 1% better. Oh, you get some experience with the pronoun, uh, with the first person point of view, the pronoun I. You get the experience, experience with constructing, taking an event that happened to you yesterday and constructing a story around it and on and on. So there's experiments you could do with writing. So, well, one other thing that you do pretty well is, is investing. And so I wanted to ask you, what, what is your, well, first of all, your criteria when you invest into something new and also maybe some advice you might have for people nowadays who are looking to get back in the game and maybe invest again. What should they pay attention to before getting well, into a new investment? It's too late for them, actually. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Look, the most important thing about investing is to realize that, what, what, well, let me ask you this. Why do people want to invest? Uh, well, mostly because they want to make money from their investments, I guess. Right. And the reason they think that is because they see, they've seen many people, whether it's people close to them or people like Warren Buffett or all the ways in between, many people have made great wealth from investing. You can right. make money from investing. That is for sure. I have made money from investing. You can, I know make people who have made money from investing. So, so it works, but the key is the key to winning the game is staying in the game. Mm. So the most important thing about investing is risk. I know I can make money in investing, but most people just get greedy. And so someone tells them, oh, you better buy AMC. And they put all their money in AMC and then AMC goes down and they go broke. And by the way, this has happened to me, not with AMC, but in other situations over the, yeah. I've been investing for 23 years and I've gone broke several times because I didn't know some basics about investing. But rule number one is understand your risk. 99%, only 1% of the work of investing is knowing what to invest in. 99% of the work is managing risk. Mm -hmm. Warren Buffett puts it more simply. He says, rule number one, don't lose money. Rule number two, don't forget rule number one. And that's all you need to know about investing. If, you, if, if, if those are the only two lines you're going to know, know those two lines. So it took me a long time to understand that managing risk is the most important thing. So like when I look at a company, for instance, I don't, of course I want to make 10 times my money, but I really want to make sure I don't lose my money. Mm -hmm. So it, a very simple example is, and this is like a very Warren Buffett style of, of example. If a company has a hundred million dollars in the bank, but on the stock market, they're only worth 50 million, then that's probably a good, and they have no debt say, that's probably a good investment. Because you could buy, someone's going to buy the whole company for 50 million and then put it 100 million in their pocket. So that's very rare, but it happens sometimes. And Warren Buffett, when, when he was younger, when, in the 1950s, that was the only kind of investing he would do. That's like called deep value investing. And so, so again, there's a lot of micro skills. There's value investing, there's growth investing, there's options trading, there's arbitrage, there's real estate investing, there's crypto investing, there's shorting, which is betting against investments. Uh, so, and there's many, many other, and then there's money management, there's risk management, there's psychology because it feels horrible when you lose money. So there's all these micro skills. And so I'm kind of looking at it from a top down view instead of just saying, Hey, invest in this, but I'll, I'll get to the invest in this in a second. Sure. The other thing is I have a chapter in the book called plus minus equal. A plus is someone you learn from an equal are people who are at your level who you trade notes with and you're all moving up together and you're all excited. So you want to surround yourself with positive people who are in, have the same love you have for investing and you trade notes and, and exchange ideas and you're supportive of each other. That's your equals. And then your minus is someone to teach because as Einstein said, if you can't explain something simply, then you don't really understand it. So make sure if you're going to invest in a company, you could explain very simply in just a few sentences, what the company does, how they make money, why they're low risk, whatever.